So Down syndrome, or trisomy 21 as it's sometimes called, is a genetic disorder that causes intellectual disabilities and characteristic physical features, and we'll talk more about those shortly. And the reason that this happens, the reason that someone has Down syndrome, is because they actually have extra genetic material in their cells. So let's actually check out what's going on inside the cells of someone with Down syndrome so that we can understand a bit more about what we mean by extra genetic material. So let's draw this cell here and let's head on into the nucleus of the cell where we can find the DNA that would be inside this cell. And you might remember that little segments of DNA make up genes. And it's genes that give the instructions for how to make all of the components of our body. So this DNA, it ends up being packed up into these structures that we call chromosomes. So that means that all of these different chromosomes that we have, they have different bits of DNA, different genes within them. And you might also remember that we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, so 46 individual chromosomes in each of our cells. So let's just roughly draw these 23 pairs of chromosomes here. So in someone with Down syndrome who has this extra genetic material, they actually have extra genetic material from the 21st chromosome. So instead of two 21st chromosomes like we can see here, they actually have three. And it's this extra genetic material that causes Down syndrome. And actually, you can have other syndromes if you have three copies of other chromosomes. So for example, if you have an extra copy of chromosome 13, you'd have Patau's syndrome. Or if you had an extra copy of chromosome 18, you'd have Edwards syndrome. And actually, there isn't a syndrome for each chromosome. Often, extra copies of different chromosomes are fatal in utero. But these are just some exceptions, chromosome 13, 18, and 21, where we get Down syndrome. And there are actually a few different ways that this extra genetic material, this extra 21st chromosome material, can arise. So the most common cause is what we drew here, so a complete extra copy of chromosome 21. And it's this that we call trisomy 21. Tri meaning three, so three chromosomes. And 21 because the extra chromosome that the person has is one of these 21st chromosomes. So this is the case for about 95% of people with Down syndrome. So about 95% have an entire extra 21st chromosome. And the reason that this happens, the, the reason there's an extra 21st chromosome popping up is because of a random error that occurs during cell division and produces an egg or a sperm, usually it's an egg, but it, sometimes it's a sperm, with an existing extra 21st chromosome. So this is a totally random event. This extra 21st chromosome here is not something that's passed down from mom or dad. So another way that someone with Down syndrome could end up with this extra genetic material from chromosome 21 is by what we call translocation. So let's actually draw this out here. So we've got two copies here of chromosome 21, right? And then what actually happens is that part of one of these copies here, it actually attaches. It, it does what we call translocates to another chromosome. And often that's onto chromosome 14, but it could be another chromosome. So this translocation might look something like this. So we can see here that this person has these two full copies of chromosome 21. And then they also have this extra little part of chromosome 21 over here attached to a totally other chromosome. And this is the case in every cell of their body. So that means that they end up with three copies of genetic material from chromosome 21. And this type of Down syndrome can be inherited from a parent. So the parent can actually pass on this translocation here, and this can cause Down syndrome in the child if they inherit it, because the person ends up with this extra genetic material from chromosome 21. So there's one other way that someone with Down syndrome can end up with this extra genetic material, and that's through a really complex sort of misguided copying process that results in what we call mosaism. But it's super rare, so we won't really talk about it in this video. But as you can see from these different events here that can cause Down syndrome, for the vast majority, this extra 21st chromosome pops up because of a random error that occurs during cell division rather than being passed down from mom or dad. And once someone has this extra genetic material from chromosome 21, well, that means that they have an extra copy of all of those genes that we would find in that chromosome, right? 
So that means that these extra genes are helping make all of these extra proteins that our body doesn't really need and that can interfere with lots of different processes that go on inside of our bodies. And that is why we end up with Down syndrome. All right, so now we know a bit about what's going on in the cells here and is causing Down syndrome. So let's actually take a look at some of the main signs and symptoms of Down syndrome. So one of the main kind of signs is intellectual disability. So the average IQ, the average intelligence quotient for someone with Down syndrome is around that of an eight to nine year old. So that basically means that the level of intelligence is around what we would expect for someone around the age of eight or nine. And this can vary quite a bit. Now, many people with Down syndrome, they have more intellectual impairment than this, and many have less. But this is about the level of intelligence that we see on average in someone with Down syndrome. And one of the other main results of this extra genetic material is what often makes it clear that someone has Down syndrome. And that's these really distinct physical features. So these features that are pretty unique to Down syndrome. So let's bring up this drawing here and let's look at some of these features that we would often see in someone with Down syndrome. So if we look at the face and the head area here, this is where we can see what we call the characteristic craniofacial features of Down syndrome. Cranio meaning the skull and facial just referring to the face. So here we can see that the eyes are a little bit slanted and right here we can see what we call an epicanthic eye fold, which just means that the upper eyelid here of the eye, it actually folds down a bit on the inner corner of the eye. And here we can see that the nose is short and this region here called the nasal bridge, it's actually quite flat. We can also see that this whole profile here, well, it's actually noticeably flat in general. It's not just the bridge of the nose that's kind of flat. So there are quite a few other characteristic craniofacial features of Down syndrome, but these are just a few examples of some of the more commonly seen ones. And if we look at the rest of the body, in the creases of the palm, this crease here called the palmar crease, it's actually one single crease. And normally in someone without Down syndrome, the palmar crease is actually separated like this. And in the feet, there's usually a pretty big space between the first and the second toes, like this. And kind of in general, all around the body, the person's joints are often a lot more flexible than they normally are. So they bend and extend a lot further than we would expect. And in the muscles, the muscle tone, so the tension that we have in our muscles at all times, well, this is often really low for someone with Down syndrome. So the muscles are less tense than they're supposed to be. They can feel really floppy. So intellectual disability and these characteristic physical features are the main things that we see in someone with Down syndrome. But it turns out that problems with different organ systems are also really common in people with Down syndrome. So let's just take a look at a few examples just to get an idea. So for example, congenital heart disease, congenital meaning something that someone's born with. Well, congenital heart disease is actually really common in someone with Down syndrome. About half of people with Down syndrome have some form of congenital heart disease. And there's actually a particular kind of congenital heart disease that's really common in people with Down syndrome. And that's when there are these holes between the chambers of the heart here, the atrium and the ventricle. It's kind of like a combination of an atrial septal defect and a ventricular septal defect. And the valves here that normally regulate blood flow between these two chambers, well, they don't really function properly. So blood ends up flowing to places where it isn't supposed to go. So this particular kind of heart disease that is really common in people with Down syndrome is called atrioventricular septal defect because the defect is in the septum of the heart here and it causes blood flow problems between the atrium and the ventricles. And let's just look at one other example here. So blood cancers are actually really common in people with Down syndrome. So the overall risk of cancer isn't actually any higher than it is in someone without Down syndrome, but blood cancers are much more common in people with Down syndrome, particularly the megakaryoblastic form of acute myelogenous leukemia. It is 500 times more likely to occur in someone with Down syndrome compared to someone without Down syndrome. So it's not that someone with Down syndrome is more likely to develop cancer, but it's that this particular cancer is really, really specific to people with Down syndrome. 
So less development of other cancers, but more development of this particular kind of leukemia, which about equals the same overall risk of cancer. So these are just a few of the conditions that are common in someone with Down syndrome. People with Down syndrome are also at risk for epilepsy, dementia, sensory problems like hearing loss, and decreased fertility, just to name a few more. So while these physical features may help us identify someone with Down syndrome, it's really this intellectual disability and these other health conditions that are what really seem to affect the quality of life of someone with Down syndrome.